Welcome to this recitation on linearization. So here we consider a prey-predator system where we have x dot equals x factorizing 3 minus x minus xy and y dot equals y factorizing 1 minus y plus xy. So here you can see that x is the, predator, is the prey because y is basically feeding on it and y is the predator because feeding on x uh, gives a growth of the, the predator species y. So here, because it's a pre-predator system, x and y are assumed to be positive. So you're asked to interpret even further this uh, system. And to find the critical points, linearize and sketch the face portrait, and then discuss what your linearization tells you about the behavior of this system. So why don't you pause the video and take a few minutes to do that. I'll be right back. Welcome back. OK. So I helped you already for the first question. We interpreted that x was the prey and y was the predator. The other thing that you could uh, see is that this term here is basically logistic growth. So if we didn't have the predator uh, species around, this species x of, of prey would just grow and eventually reach a, cr uh, a value that corresponds to uh, the, the saturation level. And if we start with a lot of, uh, of prey, then eventually they would die off and go back to that same uh, carrying capacity uh, value of preys in that environment. Same thing here for the prey, the predator. We have a logistic growth with different growth coefficient. And uh, again, if we didn't have the prey around, we would just have a logistic dynamics for these species on its own. But with the prey, we have a growth of these species. Okay, so that basically ends the first part. For the second part, we need to find the critical points. So how do we find the critical points? The critical points correspond to basically f and j equals to 0. Okay? So f equals to 0 equals to j. You see from f equals to 0 that we can have either x equals to 0, if we factorize the x in both terms. And if x is not equal to 0, then we end up with y equals to 3 minus x. Okay. For the second part, we can also here, if j equals to 0, factorize the y, and we get either y equals to 0, or we have that x is equal to y minus 1, where I just bring that term the other hand. Okay, so the critical point would be either these two entries, for example. It would be, for example, x equals to 0 and this entry, which would give us y equals to 1. Or we would have y equals to 0, and then this entry would give us x equals to 3. And then the last combined case, where we have these two entries, which corresponds to 1 and 2. If you do. OK, so let's look now at the stability of the, of the linearization of the system around each one of these critical points. So what do we do to linearize the system? Very quickly, we need to compute the Jacobian around each critical point, and we're just going to build a table after to, to do that, where we basically have f, the derivative of f around x, derivative of j around x, derivative of f around y, derivative of j around y, all this evaluated at the critical point. Okay. And this corresponds to basically linearizing our nonlinear system, because you see here that there are a lot of nonlinear systems, and studying the stability around the neighborhood of the critical point, like if it was basically linear around there. This method has its limitations, and we'll discuss them later. So first, I'm going to just here give you the results of computations that I did earlier, where basically you can repeat these computations but I don't want to spend too much time with the algebra here. So we have four critical points. Zero, zero, uh, zero, one, three, zero, and one, and two. So I'm just going to just replace the values for the Jacobian. So here you compute basically the derivative of f of x with respect to x. And you evaluate this at then the value 0, 0. And so that would, gives you, would give you 3, 0, 0, 1. For this case, same thing. We would compute 
the, we, we have the, the, the expression for the Jacobian, we evaluate it at the critical point zero, 01. That gives us 2, 0, 1, minus 1. For this one, similarly, we eva evaluate the Jacobian at 3, 0, and we get this Jacobian value. And for this last critical point, we have this Jacobian value. So now, what's next? So the Jacobian basically gives us the localized expression, uh, the, the expression around the critical point to look at the system like if it was linear around there. So from this point, we're back to the linear methods we learned before. We need to compute the eigenvalues of the Jacobian around each critical point and then determine the structure around each critical point of the, of the, uh, uh, the, the structure of the, basically the face portrait. So what are the eigenvalues? The eigenvalues are 3, 1, and you can compute that and verify for yourself. Plus or minus root of 7 pi and the whole thing over 2. So here, basically, we have two real eigenvalues, both positive. So we're going to have basically an instability uh, and stable node. And it's just basically the local stability around the critical point. Here, we would have basically one positive, one negative. So this is a saddle, which would be unstable. The minus 3, 4 would give us another saddle. Uh, and these complex eigenvalues uh, eigen would basically give us a spiral with uh, uh, the real part going to zero. Okay, so it's stable. The real part being negative. So spiral, uh, stable, asymptotical. Okay, so let's just do the diagram here and I'll continue uh, the, the discussion. So let's consider only the case where x and y are positive because we're talking about populations. And let's place our critical points. So we have a first critical point here at 0, 0. We have a second critical point here at 0, 1. We have a third critical point at 3, 0. And the last critical point at basically 1, 2, so something around there. OK. So now, based on the, the information that we have on this table, we have the eigenvalues. We could also compute the uh, corresponding eigenvectors, and you can compute that. And I'm not going to get into the details here, but basically the values of the eigenvectors would uh, be important to give you, for example, the, the direction of your spiral, etc. cetera. But um, we will do that um, on the diagram as, as we go. So here at the 0, 0 point is an unstable node. So basically, the solutions are going away from this point in the x and y. Okay? This point, uh, 0, 1, is a saddle. So we basically are on the ray here. You would compute that the eigenvector that corresponds to this negative eigenvalue would actually be in the direction 0, 1 and would converge toward this solution. And you can compute that the organ, other eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 2 would have a direction this form. And so the direction, so here we, we neglect what's happening here, but would be in this direction. And the solutions would be basically going away from here. And we would have locally something like that. Okay? For uh, for this point, which corresponds to uh, an unstable, an unstable uh, mode, basically the solution would be going away. Uh, for this point, which corresponds to 3, 0, we have a, a saddle again, which is unstable. And here you can compute that the eigenvector corresponding to the negative eigenvalue would basically be parallel to the x-axis, so it would have coordinates uh, 1, 0. And the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 4 would be directed in this direction. And basically, the solution would be fleeing from there. So locally, we would have something 
like that, like we did before. Um, bloop. OK, so we'll complete the graph. Now let, let's focus on the last critical point, 1, 2. So this point corresponds to a spiral, and it's a stable spiral. Uh, base, asymptotically stable because this eigenvalue is negative. So the solutions are going toward this point. And you can compute, uh, basically, you can look at the entry, lower entry here of the matrix, which is positive, which means that we would be going counterclockwise. So we would have something that would be looking like this. Going toward this point. Okay, so that's roughly what we would have for the three, uh, for the three critical points. Am I missing one? Three? Uh, for the, yeah, for the four critical points. And so now we can compute, complete our diagram by basically linking the different localized face portrait together. And so what would we have here? So for example, we would have a solution here that would be escaping, if we start in this neighborhood, it would be escaping from this critical point, but then eventually would get attracted by this other critical point, which when it enters its basin of attraction, and uh, given that it's asymptotically stable, would be attracted by it and go, go here. If we started from a very high y value, we would be going down and then eventually reaching, uh, getting close to this critical point that would then basically um, cause this trajectory to again escape and go, re go feed this spiral by reaching the basin of attraction of this point. If we look at the critical point uh, 3, 0, then if we start with a population x that is uh, very large and we approach this point, then we would have a solution that basically would, would get eventually continue parallel to this ray of the unstable uh, part of the critical point 3, 0, follow this ray and eventually basically just be more and more parallel to this uh, trajectory that links this linear 3, 0 critical point to the 1, 2 critical point. Okay, and so we can complete the diagram by having something like this. Now, for this point, uh, what do we have? So for this point, we also have the solutions that would be basically fleeting, uh, fleeting from, from the, the point uh, 0, 0, and eventually could be attracted to the spiral as well. Okay? So that would give us then something like this, a trajectory that would be looking like that. Um, and basically, these trajectories are looking like that. And I'm, I'm not going to complete the parts where y are uh, negative and x are, uh, y and x are not positive. So we can compl com complete the phase diagram of this nonlinear system in this way. So now, how do we interpret this? What does this mean? Well, if we remind ourselves of what this is actually modeling, and if we just look at the, this, for example, the different axes, what does the y equals zero, x equals zero point mean? It means that basically we have zero population of prey, zero of predator. And so it makes sense that we have basically an unstable point here, an unstable critical point, and that because as soon as we add one prey or one predator, we would have an increase of the prey population, eventually the predator would, would grow, and so we would have a solution that basically escapes the area around the critical point zero, zero. Uh, what would happen if we started, uh, if we just looked at the axis y equals to zero? y equals to zero correspond to uh, dynamics where we don't have the prey population, which means the, po the predator population. So the prey is just living its life, growing at logistic growth, and so basically it's attracted by the carrying capacity that would be here set at three. And so if we start with a lot of preys, eventually they die out until they reach population three. And if we start with not enough, they grow and they reach population three without the, the predator around. Same thing for the predator on its own. Now, if we put the two together, then we have a spiral, which means that we have oscillation. So as the prey, basically the, the, the predator, so if we have a lot of predators, we have very few preys, then eventually the predators start dying off as well. But then, because they start dying off, the predator population, the prey pre population starts increasing, which then gives an increase of the predator, etc. So we get eventually an oscillation that goes to this 
a tractor one to where the system would stabilize eventually, where we would have basically one prey for two predators. So that ends the interpretation of the system. And the idea here um, was to basically use what we learn in the linear, uh, for the linear systems in terms of uh, the uh, phase portrait and to see how we can apply that to the nonlinear cases after, after linearizing the, the, the system around each one of the critical points. What I should also mention here is that in all these cases that we looked at, we had cases that were structurally stable, which means that in our determinant trace, uh, in our determinant trace diagram, we weren't at any borderline case where a little perturbation could make the structure of the, uh, around the critical point change radically. So all these points are structurally stable, and the linearization, therefore, is valid around them. And that ends this recitation. <laughs>